This just in to CNN. Tucker Carlson is out at Fox News. The right wing network just announced the two have parted ways. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 heated Tucker Carlson moments. For more than six years, Tucker Carlson has been a force in the primetime cable news landscape, a champion for the Trump era GOP, a bullhorn for conspiracy theories and Fox News' most popular personality. For this list, we'll be looking at arguments, rants, and meltdowns concerning Cable's most controversial conservative commentator, who parted ways with Fox News in April 2023. What are your thoughts on Carlson's exit? Let us know in the comments, but we kindly ask that you keep things civil. After all, comments have consequences, sometimes even resulting in a defamation lawsuit. Number 10. Capital Conspiracy Theories – Tucker Carlson Tonight Carlson has spread a wide variety of conspiracy theories pertaining to COVID-19, the 2020 election, and perhaps most notably, the U.S. Capitol attack. It turns out there's quite a bit of video you haven't seen, and that video tells a very different story about what happened on January 6th. His comments regarding January 6th reached a boiling point in 2023 when House Speaker Kevin McCarthy gave Carlson more than 44,000 hours of security footage from that infamous day. Tiptoeing around the irrefutable acts of violence, Carlson handpicked certain moments to create a false narrative, portraying the riot as a peaceful protest. Lies about January 6th, which have been re relentless, have enabled some of the most unscrupulous people in our country to make a mockery of our Bill of Rights and to steal our core freedoms. Carlson went as far as to call some rioters sightseers rather than insurrectionists. He even defended Jacob Chansley, aka the QAnon shaman. Many were offended by Carlson's deceptive editing, including the family of Brian Sicknick, a U.S. Capitol Police officer who died on January 7, 2021. The tape shows very clearly Brian Sicknick walking through the building in apparent health after the media told us for two years that he had been murdered. So they were wrong about that. Number 9. M&M's Not S&M Enough Tucker Carlson tonight tackles topics that truly matter, like when the green M&M traded in her go-go boots for, <gasps> gasp! A pair of sneakers! The green M&M, you will notice, is no longer wearing sexy boots. Now she's wearing sensible sneakers. Why the change? Well, according to M&Ms, quote, we all win when we see more women in leading roles. Miss Brown also went from wearing high heels to slightly less high heels. To say that these tweaks were bizarrely controversial would be an understatement. Carlson was arguably the most outspoken critic of the M&Ms losing their sexy footwear. He grew even more critical with the arrival of Purple, making lewd comments about her physique. And there's also a plus-sized, obese, purple M&M. So we're going to cover that, of course. Carlson's war against the quote-unquote woke M&Ms resulted in the spokes candies going on an indefinite pause, which lasted barely a month before a Super Bowl comeback. Who would have guessed that the M&Ms would be Spider-Man to Carlson's J. Jonah Jameson? I can't believe we were actually put on pause. Huh, am I anxious about being back? Does it seem like I am? Number 8. That time he called out Bill O'Reilly's phoniness. Book TV. In 2003, Bill O'Reilly was Fox's biggest name, and Carlson was a commentator at CNN of all places, making an appearance on C-SPAN to discuss his new book, Politicians, Partisans, and Parasites, Carlson was asked about a quote regarding O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly's success is built on the perception that he really is who he claims to be. If he ever gets caught out of character, it's over. That's right. Carlson went on to discuss how he thinks the persona O'Reilly perpetuates on TV is just a character that he's playing. He also theorized that once O'Reilly is caught acting out of character, it's over for him. I say the shtick is sort of built on this perception that he is the character he plays. This interview predicted more things than one. 
In 2017, O'Reilly's reign at Fox News ended amid a highly publicized scandal, while Carlson essentially filled his shoes. Without question, uh, this is a, a new era. Bill O'Reilly was the fixture of the network, the public face of the network. You know, if irony was made of frozen dinners, we'd all need a lot more refrigerator space. Number 7. His primitive comments on Bubba the Love Sponge Following his CNN stint, Carlson regularly offered his two cents on Bubba the Love Sponge's radio show. Between 2006 and 2011, Carlson made statements that make his Fox News segments feel tame by comparison. Every once in a while, you should say what you really believe. Regardless of what people think, like you well, you know we, you know we do that. Ones. On multiple occasions, he stood up for religious leader Warren Jeffs, who was convicted of assaulting two underage followers in 2011. Jeffs is currently serving a life sentence plus two decades. <laughs> he's in prison because he's weird and unpopular, no. and he has a different <laughs> lifestyle that other people find creepy. No. During his conversations with the shock jock, Carlson used several degrading words to describe women including primitive, pig, and a few others we won't repeat. I love women, but they're extremely primitive. They're basic. They're not that hard to understand. Carlson also singled out Supreme Court nominee Elena Kagan, calling her unattractive. When these clips resurfaced in 2019, Carlson chalked up his comments to being naughty, saying he wouldn't bow to the mob with an apology. Number 6. Bill Nye the Science Guy Gives a Climate Change Lesson Tucker Carlson Tonight There are at least two things that Bill Nye has a better grasp on than Carlson. One, how to pull off a bow tie, and two, science. Nye discussed the latter during his 2017 appearance. Bill Nye joins us now. Bill, it's great to see you. <laughs> That doesn't sound like science to me, Bill Nye the no, Science no. Guy. That sounds like something Cognitive very business. different. Specifically, the two went head-to-head -head regarding climate change deniers. Guess which side Carlson was on? Nye argued that climate change's existence is a simple fact, and that if you think otherwise, it might be the result of cognitive dissonance. The most reasonable explanation is you have a worldview, and then you have evidence, and the evidence disagrees with your worldview, so you deny the evidence. And then along right. with that, you deny the authorities that are providing the evidence. The science guy also tried to explain how human activity is a driving force behind global warming, but he struggled to get more than a word in edgewise. The two didn't part seeing eye to eye, but Nye did determine how long it takes for Carlson to interrupt him. Roughly six seconds. This so is why aren't how long you it takes to you to interrupt me, okay? It takes you quite a bit less than six seconds. Number five, Antifa debate. Tucker Carlson Tonight Gaining more attention with the 2016 presidential election of Donald Trump, the Antifa movement opposes fascism and racism. Although some Antifa activists have been linked to violence, most groups take a non-violent approach outside of self-defense. Whenever conservatives want to speak on campus or hold a rally, Antifa groups are a reliable presence and they routinely try to stamp out speech using vigilante violence, which they perversely justify as a form of self-defense. In 2017, Antifa supporter and professor Michael Isaacson appeared on Carlson's show. Isaacson spoke out against neo-Nazi and white supremacist Richard Spencer, saying that his public hate speech incites violence. Carlson countered that he was challenging the First Amendment, but Isaacson argued that people like Spencer shouldn't be able to spread hate unchallenged. Against ideas they don't like. No, they against, have a right against, to commit against violence. people who have explicitly said that they want to eliminate those people from our society. Throughout their back and forth, Carlson repeatedly asked Isaacson about his teaching credentials. Despite making it abundantly clear that he is a professor, Carlson somehow mistook him for a congressman as the debate wrapped. Yeah. I mean, I am right. not discriminating against my students. Yeah. Ultimately, Except you think that people you disagree should be beaten up, but whatever. All right, Congressman, I mean, Congressman. <laughs> Close, Professor. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Number four, Tucker's True Colors. Last week tonight with John Oliver. On multiple occasions, John Oliver has turned Carlson into a punchline. 
However, the late-night comedian wouldn't dedicate an entire segment to Carlson until 2021. I would like nothing more than to not play into his wildly offensive shtick. You might even be thinking right now, why give him the attention that he's so clearly trolling for? Oliver analyzed Carlson's upbringing, career, and history of divisive comments, questioning if the far-right host is a white supremacist. Oliver argued that just because Carlson isn't a member of the KKK doesn't mean that he isn't endorsing similar ideals. So often, he positions himself as someone just asking the hard questions, the ones that they don't want you asking questions like, is affirmative action racist? And should America be selective with immigrants? And has the Democratic Party become anti-white and anti-male? He even compared one of Carlson's comments to the white supremacist slogan. Whether or not Carlson fits the definition of a white supremacist, Oliver pointed out that many white supremacists have thrown support behind him, including KKK leader David Duke. On his own show, Carlson has repeatedly questioned what racism looks like. To Oliver, there's a clear answer. And if he can sell his audience on his white identity politics, if he can persuade them that the big existential threat to America right now is diversity, it sort of doesn't matter if he says aloud what his preferred solutions to that might be. Number three, the segment that wasn't aired, Tucker Carlson Tonight. In January 2019, Dutch historian Rutger Bregman went viral after accusing billionaires at the Davos World Economic Forum of avoiding taxes. The T word is really the forbidden word in places like Davos. You can talk about anything, about education, about feminism, about climate change, as long as you don't talk about higher taxes on the rich. The following month, Bregman asserted that Carlman was part of the problem while appearing on his show. We're used to seeing Carlson fire back at his guests, but the host became more agitated than usual, dropping the F-bomb before calling Bregman a moron. I did what I try hard never to do on this show, and I was rude. I called him a moron, and then I modified that word with a vulgar, vulgar Anglo-Saxon term that is also intelligible in Dutch. Fox News didn't air the segment, but that didn't stop Bregman from subsequently leaking it. Acting as if this was the first time he's ever been rude, Carlson claims that the segment wasn't aired because of the profanity. But you're not allowed to use that word on television. So once I'd said it out loud, there was no airing the segment. This explanation has been called into question, though, as Fox News has merely bleeped swear words in the past. Number 2. Tucker's Trump Texts People often question whether Carlson believes everything he says, especially concerning the praise that he showered upon Donald Trump. In 2023, Dominion Voting Systems' defamation lawsuit against Fox News brought Carlson's private messages to light. New internal communications from some of Fox News' most prominent figures show concerns and misgivings some had about then-President Donald Trump's claims of election fraud. He criticizes co-workers and network higher-ups, which has been cited as a reason why Fox News decided to dismiss Carlson and pay out the rest of his contract. We are very, very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. It was also revealed in January 2021, Carlson sent a text message saying that Fox News was very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. Carlson added that he passionately hated the former president, although soon after those texts were made public, he'd find himself interviewing Trump about his legal troubles and prospects for a 2024 run. Usually when you have something like this, the Democrats say, oh, he's terrible, guilty. The Democrats have even said, I'm innocent. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few other Tuckerisms. Sex Crazed Pandas, Tucker Carlson Tonight. We'd like to say that this is his show's most eyebrow-raising story. The real panda is a secret stud with a taste for flesh and a fearsome bite. Praise for Putin, Tucker Carlson Tonight. So, Russia or Ukraine, which do you prefer, Tuck? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? His thoughts on immigration. Tucker Carlson tonight. We feel like there's a South Park meme that can sum this up. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Carlson later saying his comments were being taken out of context. The worst human being. 
this guy wasn't fishing for compliments. Dude, you are the worst human being I've ever known to make. I want you to Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. John Stewart Takedown Crossfire Sometimes we forget that Carlson was a co-host on Crossfire during the early 2000s. Then we remember Jon Stewart's epic appearance in October 2004. Why, why do you argue? <laughs> the two of you, I, I hate to see it. Stewart might have been in the middle, but it was Carlson and Paul Begala who got caught in the comedian's crossfire. Although Stewart was there to discuss his book, it quickly turned into a brutal critique of the show and what he considers its negative impact on America. You just said we're too rough on them when they make mistakes. No, 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 you're not too rough on them. You're part of their strategies. You're partisan, um, what do you call it, hacks. Stewart also went after Carlson's wardrobe, specifically his trademark bow ties. Less than a year later, CNN's new president, Jonathan Klein, pulled the plug on Crossfire, and Carlson's contract wasn't renewed. If your idea of uh, confronting me is that I don't ask hard-hitting enough news questions, we're in bad shape, fellas. Although Carlson claims that he left Crossfire, Klein wanted to take CNN in another direction, saying, I agree wholeheartedly with Jon Stewart's overall premise. You're You've got to be kidding, man. You're on CNN. Say. My, the show that leads into me is puppets making crank phone calls. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.